It's 5.45 p.m., which means it's time for BC TV's Nightly News Roundup. I'm Roland Boyden alongside Joe Bushy, and we're back in action. Joe, uh, it's great to be back. Of course, we had to take a, a quick indeed. break. Uh, let them put in the glass behind us. We'll talk more about those renovations in a moment. But first, we'll get to talk about uh, what's coming up on deck here as we uh, swing into some new graphics here as well. Uh, of course, Irene, it's that uh, anniversary. We'll talk more about that in just a moment. But I uh, got some other things like the Latches Marquee. They just put that up. Very cool renovations. Real Bill, once known as Super Bill, once known as Wild Bill, he just broke a new record. Uh, we'll talk about that. And uh, as I mentioned, of course, Irene, all in there. Uh, we'll be sure to get that uh, in as soon as possible. But in the meantime, for everybody out there that maybe doesn't know at this point, we do it in 15 minutes. So even and if we're on the rooftop some, now. It's beautiful. We'll be back. Stick with us. 545 Live. This is Brattleboro, Vermont, and the problem is this is happening throughout New England and specifically throughout the state of Vermont. This is 545 Lads, Rowan Boyden with a special BC TV report. Hard to believe now, a year ago, Joe, Hurricane Irene uh, ravaged Vermont. It's uh, been the theme of many an event around town. It'll be the theme of our uh, return broadcast here to 545 Live as we uh, get to show off our brand new set here. Very exciting. Of course, uh, we'd been working so hard on these indoor sets. And uh, with that, boy, right. what about the view? I mean, it's the right behind us. From up here, huh? We needed some awesome? glass, put it together. All it's right. a little windy, though. It's, uh, here's, I was really worried that we were, the rain, you know, it's like I looked at the weather, thunderstorms, all like that. Right, right. Uh, it's clear now. But it we got, fine. But we got some sun for it, which, uh, very cool stuff. All right, uh, we're going to do plenty of uh, cool stuff. Um, we're going to take a little rewind in time back to when uh, Irene did strike, uh, look at some of our coverage and some of uh, the bevy of events that are going on uh, this year around town to celebrate Irene. But first, let's do that reformer roundup. Quickly breeze through the latest headlines. Uh, you're on for it, Joe, so uh, we're going to try and start there, perhaps, as we uh, get ready to reel through this Welcome back show for us. We ready? Ooh, no, other oh, way. this way, okay. We'll start the reformer roundup with Monday's announcement by the District 2 Environmental Commission approving the construction of Sersosimo Lumber Industries new mulch processing and packing plant. And to close, former Wyndham County Senator Robert Gannett passed away over the weekend. That's uh, our reformer roundup. Just quickly looking through the headlines. You want more? You gotta go to uh, reformer.com. You don't even need the Brattleboro. They've got a smartphone app, and of course, you can pick up some paper for them as well as I'm sure uh, they'd appreciate. Speaking of newspapers, commonsnews.org uh, is where you can find out more about the Commons. BCTV's just inked a new deal on a partnership between the Commons, wherein uh, we get uh, a sneak peek every Tuesday morning uh, of what's coming up in their paper. In return, we're gonna hopefully get the, them some stories. It'll be uh, all sorts of cross pollination. So look for that next week. But they've got a Commons coming out tomorrow with uh, plenty of good stuff. Commonsnews.org, again, you can find out how to get a subscription. It is free, but you can also uh, donate there as well. Sponsor. All right, uh, moving on. It, uh, it was a year ago, Joe, that Hurricane Irene hit, and we've got plenty of stories here um, with things going on around town. Of course, uh, the governor, he uh, couldn't stay away, as it were. Uh, his home, hometown, home area. We've got uh, some clips of him. Irene whacked us hard. We prepared for the worst and hoped for the best. Unfortunately, we got the worst. I know that there has been so much pain. But I hope that we will recognize today the extraordinary commitment, contribution, and recovery as a result of the generosity of every single Vermonter and strangers who came in from out of state to give us a helping hand in our time of need. I look at uh, Peter Shumlin, he came into town. You taped that, Joe, as you were out and about getting some footage for us there. Um, we'll move on now and uh, I'll turn it back over to you. I'll do the honors of Roland, for Roland, of setting the pretext for what was perhaps your favorite story to come out of that chaos. Indeed. It had to do with the NBC evening news coverage the night of the flood 
at Ground Zero, or what was Ground Zero uh, for Brattleboro, uh, down there on William Street by David Parker's building, the Whetstone Studio for Arts. And some remarkably similar footage to that posted just hours earlier by us 545 Livers. This is Brattleboro, Vermont, and the problem is this is happening throughout New England and specifically throughout the state of Vermont. The earth can't handle any more rain, and remember, flooding runs behind, so there is more rain yet to come. And Elm Street, oh my God, look at this. Let's see who's trying to get their car out of here. It's really surreal when you think about all these people moving their cars. That looks suspiciously familiar to the 545 Putting the split screen, uh, putting them up side by side, it really did. Now that whole whole uh, story really proliferated on YouTube. There were, uh, I we counted that first, uh, that first 48 hour cycle, I counted 212, I remember, YouTube posts uh, with videos, uh, cell phone videos, some more uh, professional videos. Everybody came in and taped it and uh, that's really how the story was initially told. Uh, mainstream media was not there in the scene. Uh, they had believed Indeed. that it had uh, blown over. Uh, a lot more to talk about with Irene, uh, but we've got some other non-Irene stories as well, so I want to make sure that we get to all of them and take a look at uh, a few of the things coming up. Of course, uh, Rock River Festival. Towns North of here was, were uh, hit by Irene's fury as well. Uh, residents of those area dub dubbed it uh, the Rock River Recovery Project. Towns like Newfane uh, pulled together in the coming year to do things like plant new grass and flowers along recently repaired roadways in honor of the triumphs in those uh, communities. And they hosted a parade in South Newfane this past Sunday. Uh, the MC of that was Deborah Lee Luskin, and it was produced by uh, none other than BCTV's latest employee, Jeff Mastriano. Jeff uh, Mastriani. Uh, <laughs> Just kidding, Jeff. All right, let's uh, take a look at some of the uh, hard work of BCTV. Morning. Welcome to the first Rock River Revival Parade. This is the brainchild of Chris Trebert, and we're here to celebrate recovering from Irene. A year ago today, we were, we were drowning. All right, uh, a few more things uh, to wrap up the Irene Project. We had a slew of Wyndham County representatives come in to talk about it. Uh, among them, David Dean. He's uh, the Wyndham District 4 rep, and he is on the House uh, Fish, Wildlife, and Water Resources Committee uh, talking to us a little bit about what happened to our rivers. Of course, there was the initial devastation caused by the flood, but there were some other problems that uh, ensued as well. After the storm, the human intervention caused a great deal of damage that was unnecessary. One of the strong focuses in the Rivers Bill was to, in fact, get that education out and get it out to any, everybody and anybody who owns a big yellow machine and might find themselves operating in the rivers of Vermont. All right, uh, and with that, we'll uh, leave Irene alone. There's more events coming up. There's more footage. Uh, 545 Live viewers can take their own rewind in time uh, by going to our YouTube channel. It's some of the first things that were posted if you scroll all the way to the bottom, including our uh, initial report you saw just a glimpse of as uh, we rolled our opening there and uh, plenty more footage that ensued from that as well. Joe, let's talk elections though. It's a primary, it's a voting day. Hopefully uh, folks around here took advantage either of the uh, substantial opportunities to vote early or uh, did their voting as well. A couple uh, key primaries here uh, going on. And uh, that includes the Attorney General. We've had uh, both TJ Donovan and uh, incumbent Bill Sorrell down in our downtown studios to talk about this uh, upcoming election. A lot of hot topics uh, going in this year. Um, things like Vermont Yankee, uh, healthcare, a lot of big topics, but uh, a recent incident put tasers back in the limelight. And uh, we got both candidates to talk about that issue. Local police departments want to deploy tasers. I think the people have a right to a say. If they do choose to deploy tasers, then there has to be a statewide policy that they follow. And that policy that I'm gonna create, I'm gonna bring in not only the ACLU, the League of Cities and Towns, so we have the municipal interest, law enforcement, but also, most importantly, mental health professionals. I said that tasers are a, we a, a weapon they are a lethal weapon. They are certainly less lethal than the traditional firearm, right. but they are a weapon and they should be used when used 
only after proper training. I've been tased. I agreed. Right? I agreed to be tased before issuing the report, and it's not pretty. Yeah, it was the longest five minutes or five seconds, excuse me, of my <laughs> life. Uh, but when it's over, it's over yeah. with a taser. All right, Joe, uh, another uh, election coming up. Sarah Edwards recently vacated rep seat for Brattleboro. Tristan Tolino, uh, Kate O'Connor, both uh, vying for that. You did a little reconnaissance mission for that as well. District 3. Kate and Tristan met with Tim Johnson in the WTSA FM studio, and they they had a little get-together. Tim asked them some questions, and they both had some pretty good answers. I like the idea of Green Mountain Care, and this is a big thing for the governor, to make it so the health insurance um, travels with the person as opposed to stays with the business. I'm very sympathetic to people who are afraid uh, about the implications of that because what we've done is we've set, as a state, we've set a roadmap uh, for a, a two-year process, maybe more. A few things uh, before we wrap up, Joe. Uh, let's talk about the Latches new marquee. Very cool little story. Of course, Irene played a part in uh, that old marquee uh, needing a revamp, and they've done it. Uh, tireless 545 Live uh, content specialist Maria Dominguez uh, was uh, there to uh, help us get some footage of that. Uh, she was out filming uh, them as they put up what's really a very slick looking new sign. I was very impressed as they uh, started to put this thing together. Uh, so the, she's will be uh, putting out a piece on this, some interviews, uh, kind of the backstory behind this. You're looking at some of her footage right now. And uh, before we wrap up, some knew him as Super Bill, some knew him as Wild Bill. Now he's known as Real Bill, uh, and he just broke a new record. Quite an interesting one, I think. Uh, I heard skipping. I thought maybe there was a rope involved. But this 5K record uh, uh, f with the Guinness Book of World Records uh, was for uh, skipping like a child without a rope, and he did uh, manage to get himself huh. uh, in the record books for this one. We can uh, take a look here. As uh, you can see, he uh, made his way uh, across that uh, five-kilometer stretch to, in fact, take this next record. Uh, he's got more big plans uh, in the works, so expect to see Real Bill back on BCTV as he uh, takes this to the next level. Fun little oh. story to end that part. Uh, but we've got a few more notes before we wrap up here. Uh, we'll uh, take a look at... Oh, we got the Brattleboro Savings, savings and Loan. Yeah, mm. Brattleboro Savings and Loan Community Appreciation Day will be this Thursday, complete with free hot dogs and hamburgers, plenty of other free food. Uh, mm. That'll be on their Main Street property mm. around lunchtime again Thursday. And I'll turn it back uh, your way, Joe. And BCTV viewers can catch last night's highly publicized Brattleboro Planning Commission meeting two clicks up on the dial on our Government and Education Sister channel, Channel 10, this Thursday at 4.30 p.m. There you go. All right. Uh, we've got no time left here in 545 Live, so we'll just say adieu. Beginning with the flooding in Vermont, NBC's Ron Allen is up in Brattleboro. Ron, good morning to you. as the waters in places like Brattleboro, Br Brattleboro began to rise. This is usually a sleepy little New England town, but and that's a babbling brook normally behind me there, but the water is just raging. It's, this is downtown Brattleboro, Vermont. You can see the muddy water racing underneath this bridge. They shut the bridge down.